Okay, guys, let's get started. So I'm Susan Walsh. I am the classification guru, and I'm here to talk to you today about the dangers of dirty data and how to fix it. So um, hopefully you will uh, get something valuable out of this and learn something new. Um, so what I wanted to do was tell you a little bit about myself, why am I qualified to sit here and talk to you about dirty data from my data den. Um, I hope you like the background as well. Um, let's have a little talk about what is dirty data, um, the consequences of it, how to ensure that you can get accurate data, and then finally how to spot check and fix any errors that you have. Um, and then we'll summarise that all at the end. So. Who the hell is a classification guru? Who am I to sit here and talk to you today and say, I can help you fix dirty data? Well, my background started in my 20s when I spent a lot of time working in FMCG companies. Um, I worked in sales uh, and did that for a number of years. That's what I thought I should be doing, but actually I realized I didn't really enjoy it um, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. So I, I did what most people do. I, I went and opened a shop, you know, that's uh, what everyone does, isn't it? So I opened a women's clothes shop in Guildford where I live. Um, at the time it was when internet shopping hadn't really taken off, but there was a gap in the market for smart casual office wear for women. So um, I had, you know, well, it was actually a pretty stressful eight months running and setting up a shop but I learned so much from that but I racked up so much debt that when I finished there I just needed a job so I went online I found an ad on Gumtree for some data classification work uh, I'd never done it before but I thought might as well give it a try and um, so I went to work for a spend analytics company and did that for five happy years. I helped grow a team of 14 people. We all classified data, I uh, trained and managed them all. And then I felt it was time to start a new business um, called The Classification Guru. Um, and why did I call it that? Well, I think I'm an expert in spend data classification. So what that means is I take companies' financial data um, with a supplier name and a description, and then I classify it to a taxonomy. And I've been doing that for eight years now. I think it's fair to say that not many people know it as intensely as I do. And also when I was working at the Spend Analytics company, I saw that there was a huge focus on dashboards and analytics, but actually the real root problem was the data itself, not the fancy dashboards. And nobody seemed to be paying much attention to the quality of the data. So I really thought there was an opportunity there to offer a service that focused just on the data quality. So I have just come up to my third birthday on that. So, um, and you know, when I started, not so many people were talking about data quality, but it's definitely something that's um, becoming more prevalent now. So, what is dirty data? Well, I might have an opinion on it. You might have a different opinion. It's, it's both are right. It's different things to different people. But if we take it down to a very basic level, it can be things like misspelled words, incorrect descriptions, missing codes, data information in the wrong columns. I'm sure we've all had that. Uh, no standard units of measure. So you have liters, LTR, grams, GRMs. I'm sure you know it all. Currency issues, formatting issues, and of course, finally, the dreaded duplicates, um, which I know we all have to battle with. So in my line of work, what does dirty data look like to me? Well, classifying data, um, it, it can be... Um, very, uh, the impact of it being wrong can have uh, consequences on, on various different aspects of procurement life. So an example um, that I give you here is um, LinkedIn. So we all know what LinkedIn is. Um, we all know what it does. The description said restaurant. So someone that I was training up decided to classify it as a restaurant. Um, now I can see why they did that. They looked at the description. 
but you have to use context in this case. So you'd have to look at the supplier name and the description and say, okay, that doesn't seem quite right. What's most likely happened in this instance is the description is referring to an, a job advert or a, a business advert, something like that. So it's really important to pay attention. Next, we have Thomson Reuters, which is a publisher and they also um, hold events, but quite often I see it classified as business law services because they publish business law books. So you just have to be a little bit careful. And then we have a, a, someone here who's just not read the supplier name correctly. So instead of thermal insulation, um, it's the, the company name is Thermal Installation. So again, it's attention to detail that's really important within my line and area of work. Um, this company came up recently called Joke Technology based in Germany. When I tried to Google them, uh, what I got was a lot of joke companies. But actually, after a bit more digging, I found out that they actually produce manufacturing components and supplies. And then finally, my favourite one, um, Tinder Corporation. Now, I'm sure we all maybe wouldn't admit to knowing what Tinder or who Tinder is. Um, we would all assume that it was the Tinder, but actually there is a Tinder Corporation in the UK that provides IT services. So it's really important when you're working with this kind of data that you don't assume that you know what the, the company or the item is, you know, use the other data around it as context. You know, the description says additional data cabling. Chin, I'm just laughing at your comment there. Thank you. Uh, hope your head doesn't explode too much. Um, so yeah, so there's there's little flags within the data and other columns that can point you to to guide you to whether you think it looks right or not. And you know, after many years of classifying, there's also things that I can just look at now and I can tell that they're 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 not quite right. But the thing is, it's really easy for me to sit here and show you um, a couple of lines of examples that stick out, and you think, oh, how could that how could that be missed, or you know, how did they not notice that? But when you're looking at you know, rows and rows of data, it can be really hard to spot these things. Um, it's not as easy as it looks. So, so how can we manage this? Um, well, the first thing I would say is when you're classifying data or, or if you can relate it to the kind of work that you're doing right now, you know, look at multiple columns and, and think about context of would, would, so I would think of, would the supplier use this or not? Um, look at the vendor name, uh, you know, for new data, you should be checking on Google, you know, but also Google the company with the country name because I work with a lot of global data. So there's multiple different company names across the country. Don't assume that description is correct. And when it's uh, financial stuff, look at the values that can really help guide the classification for you as well. So it's not just classification, there's supplier normalization as well. And I work with a lot of global data, as I just said. So when it comes to normalization, um, I've got a company here called Granger. Now, actually, if you look at Google, there's actually two different Grangers. There's Granger in the UK and there's Granger in the US. So, you know, really important to just be thorough and check these things out. How can we manage this? Well, when you're normalizing, Keep in mind the following, you know, don't assume you know what it is. Think about would the company that you're working for use this product or service or part? Um, think about where the supplier is located. And, you know, all around Europe, they've got different endings, you know, GmbH, Inc, PLC Limited. That will give you a guide. And then does the website of that company match the description in the data? And is the data wrong or is the supplier wrong? You know, you've got to look at these things. So that's just a, a few couple of examples of what I've worked with. And what is the consequences of that? I'm, I'm sure that you know it, it can be pretty catastrophic. So for things like reporting and decision making, it can be dashboards that are used to make business decisions with the wrong information. It can be cost savings that you either miss or misjudge. Supplier negotiations um, based on the wrong information. 
supplier rationalization, um, you might actually have less suppliers than you think you do because you haven't normalized them yet. It could affect forecasting. You know, if that information's not right, that's going to affect lots of different parts of the business. And budgets, you know, does, decisions are made on budgets based on dashboards and if the data feeding into those dashboards are wrong, then it's going to cause all kinds of problems. So how does that look? So for example, in normalization, um, and now I know you won't be able to see the, the company names here, it's a bit too small, but this is uh, unnormalized data here. If I show you the normalized version of that, you can see that actually there's only four suppliers out of all those uh, unnormalized suppliers there. Um, and that significantly changes the values with each of those suppliers and what's going on within the business. So immediately you see a different picture of what's going on. And it's the same with classification. This is an unnormalized, this is IBM. And if you normalize it, you can see actually there was two level ones and one of them was cleaning. Um, now, you know, that sounds ridiculous, but I actually have had a file where cleaning was classified to IBM. So it does happen and it can really have a significant impact in both cleaning and your IT products. And what about technology implementation? Well, Data cleansing is often neglected before implementing new software or systems. I've heard that many times. Um, you know, your errors are only discovered post implementation or part way through. Staff lose faith in the data or the system that you're trying to implement. They're disengaged. They claim it doesn't work. They don't trust it because it's wrong. Um, it's really hard to get them to engage cost a lot of money to fix you know you have to hope staff will, will then adopt the technology once it's fixed or ultimately you may have to abandon the project and I know that that does actually happen and that can be really costly and it also affects things like AI so and automation so data must be cleansed and prepped beforehand AI learns from training data sets. So if that data is not right, it's going to learn the wrong thing and repeatedly um, use that wrong information. Machine learning is also based on instructive information, coding rules. If that's picked up from the wrong information, then that's just going to further spread that um, misinformation. And as we know, garbage in, garbage out. So that's lots of problems. I'm sure you're very familiar with them, but how can we ensure data accuracy? Well, I hate to tell you it, but there's no quick fix. There's no magic button and there's no software in the world that will get your data um, cleansed properly. You really need some human interaction and some human intervention, especially when, if it's a new, fresh data set. You have to get your whole organization engaged in this. You know, it's everybody's responsibility to work with data, um, not just the ID department, not just the data department. It's sales, it's marketing, it's the receptionist. You know, we all have to be responsible and take ownership for that. We need to agree common terms and standards like we were talking about earlier, units of measure. You know, is it liters? Is it LTR? Is it Ls? Um, and it's really, really important that you maintain your data as well. Once you've fixed it, it's not good enough that you just put it away on a shelf and don't check it again. Data is forever moving and changing. Um, people come in and accidentally delete things or overwrite things or think that they know better and change it. So in order to maintain consistency, you always have to maintain it. And depending on the size of your data sets, I would recommend monthly or quarterly um, in terms of maintenance, but leaving it a year, you know, the damage is done and you, you may have to pay someone to fix the whole thing again um, and it becomes really costly. And spot check your data as well. Um, so maintaining it's great, but spot check it and just make sure it's looking all right. So there's a little um, acronym that I use to help you try and uh, maintain and ensure your data accuracy, and that's called COAT. 
So I say that when you're working with your data, you have to make sure it's got its coat on, it has to be consistent, it has to be organized, it has to be accurate, and it has to be trustworthy. And I've got something here that I'd like to share with you. Hopefully you can hear it okay. your data out in the cold. You wouldn't go out into sub-zero temperatures without the correct protection. So why do so many companies forget to protect their data? Unprotected data can lead to bad business decisions that cost money and put jobs at risk. That's why your data needs its coat on. This means making sure your data is consistent, organized, accurate, and trustworthy. Consistent means using the same standards, terms, and classifications company-wide. Organized data makes it easier to find. Think of it like a messy closet. It can be difficult to find what you're after, even when you know it's in there. When organized correctly, it becomes easier to find what we want. Data should be accurate, which can mean different things to different people, but at its most basic level, accurate data is correct. And finally, data should be trustworthy. This is critical. If your team can't trust the data, they might not use it. And business decisions around jobs, staffing, and budgets are all based on data, so it's got to be right. Like any coat, there are differences in the quality of data services out there. If you buy a cheap coat, it might not be waterproof or protect you enough, and it won't last more than one season. If you don't invest in good quality data services, you will end up paying twice as much, if not more in the long run, to fix the earlier mistakes. If you'd like to speak to an expert about data in your own business, visit theclassificationguru.com to find out more. So that's my little video I'm very proud of. I had that, um, that was made last week, so it's very new. Um, so I only have a few minutes and I've got questions, so I'm going to whiz through this. Um, hopefully it makes sense. Um, happy to uh, put the slides on my website, theclassificationguru.com afterwards if you need to see them. Um, how you can spot check and fix your data. Um, I use some software called Omniscope, which is data modeling and visualization. Um, but because not many people use that, um, I've uh, given you the equivalent method in Excel. It's not great, but it can be done. So first of all, um, create a pivot with your data. Then you want to select uh, a table and the view that you want to have a look at is tabular form so that the data goes across the way. Uh, now, obviously this is for classification, but it could be used in other areas as well. Um, this is, I can't even see what I'm looking at here. This is, I'm clicking on a new window. And the reason that I'm doing that, I'll show you, it'll become apparent. Uh, you want to select all, and then you want to choose vertical. And what that will do is give you two windows for your file. So you'll have your pivot table on the left and you'll have your raw data on the right. What that then means is you can scroll down the pivot table to look for areas where things are not quite right. So um, if we look at Breaks, um, that is a UK food services company. And if you scroll down, you can see that there's some transport warehousing in there. It doesn't look quite right. What we can then do is go into the raw data tab, change that, click refresh once we've updated it and that will refresh the pivot. So then you can go down and keep looking for further uh, errors. If you're working with a really large data set, it's really hard in Excel. So you might want to chop it up by category and to make it a little bit easier. Wouldn't normally recommend that, but it can be quite tricky within Excel. Um, so very quickly to summarize, accurate data is critical. There are no shortcuts. Um, know your data, so look at it regularly. Um, it will make your life easier. Maintain it and make sure your data has its coat on. So these are my details. I've not got uh, LinkedIn on there, but if you type in Susan Walsh classification guru, I am the only one there, you will find me. Um, so let's have a quick look at the questions. I think I've got about a minute. Um, are there tools to help with reviewing and do I clean data programmatically using coding or manually? So um, it's a little bit of a mix of both. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see how I do do it with Omniscope. Um, but I genuinely believe that when you have a cr f uh, fresh, clean data set, you really need to have someone who's experienced in it cleanse that data, classify it, do what needs to be done. 
um, manually at the start. It can then be used for automation and all those good things, but definitely a human at the start. Um, I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, please, if you've got any more questions, I'd be happy to uh, discuss them. Wherever you like, I'm also in the Slack channel. Um, thanks so much for your time. Um, it's been lovely chatting with you. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this and, and got something out of it. So uh, thank you very much. Bye.